Right. I'm going to catch up on the old Dirt and Feetin project. How crusty this axle is. Anyway, I've um, replaced the uh, springs with the uh, the ones that it came with. These are four leaf. The ones that were on were only three leaf. Um, the bushes it came with were made of nylon, so I fitted new poly bushes at the back and painted the, the shackles it came with. These are slightly different design. Um, but they seem to be all right. Uh, new U-bolts. Could have cut them down, but I'm going to leave them like that just because they fit lower in blocks. And it's also fitted the actual bump stops that uh, came with the springs, although there's nothing actually <laughs> in this chassis for them to stop on, so it's a bit pointless at the moment in time. Um, the front bushes are alright. The only thing is, they cut a hole in the body to get to the bolt to take the spring off, because there was no access there for it. It's been put on with the body off the chassis. I'd um, like to get some new rear shocks as well, but again, I have no idea what they came off of. This is Mark 1 Escort based. All Mark 1 shocks I've seen so far, I've got a pin on the top and a bush on the bottom. And these are bush either side. Alright, it's a bit windy. Let's go and take a look under the engine bay. Okay, excuse the wind as we are outside on top of a hill. Uh, new ignition coil with ballast resistor. The new fuel pump down there. Some new hoses for the radiator, new radiator cap. In the process of doing the thermostat housing because it's a bit corroded. I have fiberglassed up where the heater was because that was all cracked and letting in water. I'm not going to have a heater, so I need to sand it down and paint it. I find a way of stopping the battery box from uh, filling up with water though. So you do that because the drive is so steep. Right. Next up, let's go and look at the wheels I'm going to fit. So the wheels that came with the car are 13 inch uh, Weller 8 spokes, it's 6 inch wide and as much as I like Wellers, I don't think they suit the Dutton very well. Um, they're also Unilug as well, see their oval shaped holes, that's where they can fit different PCDs which is strange on something that's Ford based because it's quite a common PCD for a car. Um, they're quite wide, they got 185 70 13 tyres on them and on top of that they had 2 inch wheel spaces on them as well and I think it was done to fill the wheel arches out. Um, but every wheel spacer had cracked around the mountain studs, uh, so no idea what kind of stress that was putting on the actual um, bearings and, and whatnot. So I'm actually going to fit a skinnier wheel and tyre and remove the wheel spacers, and I'll show you them now. And this is what I'm going to be fitting. These are 4 inch wide, 13 inch diameter Ford Anglia wheels, uh, stroke early Mark 1 Cortina, mid 1960s. I had a friend, Media Blaster, for me, he did an excellent job. Uh, sadly, I didn't do a very good job of the painting that's on the inside, so you're not going to see that. Uh, I'm going to fit them with 155 80 13 tyres, which are narrower than the other ones. Uh, but it will mean the steering's going to be a lot easier. I'm also not going to be using the wheel spacers. So they are going to look a little bit lost inside the wheel arches, but I'll correct that when I do the bodywork later on, probably next year. Um, I'm no stranger to chopping up fiberglass vehicles and altering them. Anyway, um, the engine's a 1.6 cross flow, so... You know, it's untuned, it's just a basic 1.6, so it's probably like 60, 65 horsepower. So it doesn't really justify having really fat wheels and tyres on it. Um, it doesn't really kind of improve anything on something that light. I don't really need the extra grip. Uh, so these will do just fine. Now over the winter months, I hope to get the engine sorted. I've got now a proper uh, cooling fan and pulley that matches it because... <laughs> I can't use that. I don't know <laughs> who did that, but it's not great. Um, got an alternator to go on. I've got the bracket made for that. Uh, I've got new wheel nuts in there, starter motor. Uh, I forget what's in there. Uh, water pump has got to go on. And a plethora of other bits and pieces like pipes and things. Oh, that's the thermostat housing. Now, it wasn't running a thermostat, so I suspect it had some overheating issues. I think she's quite badly corroded. Not sure what I'm going to do there. But it has got a bung welded to the top of it for a thermostatic switch to run a fan. So it didn't have an electric fan when I bought it, but I might fit one just in case. Uh, after the overheating issues I had with the Robin Hood, I don't want to go down that road again. So there we go. Hopefully we can catch up on this when I've done a bit more work. Thanks for watching. Take care.